What's going on everybody? Welcome to part 38 of our machine learning tutorial series. I'm hoping to cover a lot, so let's go ahead and get started. We've been working on our own custom k-means algorithm and we're going to continue uh, picking that up. So at this point we have at least classified all of the feature sets and in this part here I'm passing for now but we already wrote the code that will redefine the new centroids for us. And then what we're going to do is, uh, for classifications, okay, okay. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to say optimized equals true. Again, just like the support vector machine, innocent until proven guilty here. And then what we're going to say is 4C in self dot centroids. Um, what do we want to do? Well, we're going to say the original centroid is equal to the pre centroids C. And then we're going to say the current centroid centroid is equal to self dot centroids C. Okay, so then we're just going to compare the two and we're going to just say if MP dot sum of the uh, current centroid uh, minus the original centroid divided by the original centroid times 100.0 is greater than self dot tolerance we're going to say optimized equals false so if any of these centroids in their movement move more than the tolerance in this case 0 0.001 we're going to say no we are not optimized that said if we go through this entire for loop and optimize never actually says it's false. False. We're going to say if optimized break. So that will break this for loop and stop us from running through every single one of those maximum iterations. But otherwise, we will continue that for loop until we are done with max iterations. And then whatever that centroid happens to be at the time, that will be um, the final the final centroid. So I'm going to leave, well, we'll just do predict really quick because this is relatively easy. So predict, uh, do we already have distances? So with distances, self.data feature set for feature set in, let's do, let's just copy this line and actually classification min distances. Yeah. So let's just take this copy. So predict is pretty quick to write <laughs> so there. And so distances equals that, and rather than feature set, it's just data. And then classification, distances.index min distance. So then here we would just return classification. Okay, <clears throat> I think that's all we had to do. So now we're going to say the CLF for the classifier equals K underscore means. And then we're going to say CLF.fit X. So train that bad boy. And now what we're going to do is uh, we'll, we'll plot the centroids. So we'll say for centroid in clf.centroids, plt.scatter. And this will be um, clf.centroids, uh, centroid, and then 0. And then the same thing for 1. So I'm just going to do comma 1. And then we're going to say, I'm going to hit enter here just so we don't run off the page. Marker is going to equal just an O. We'll say the color for the centroids is K. Size will be 150. Line width will be 5. So those will be the, the centroids. And then finally, we're going to say for classification in clf.classifications. Classif uh, the color of that classification will just be colors and then that classification easy enough and then we're going to say for each feature set in clf.classifications classification this is this is some ripe code for some typos I'm just saying <laughs> uh, we're going to say plt.scatter and we're going to scatter feature set zero feature set one marker <clears throat> will be an X 
and then we'll say color is going to be whatever that color choice was. Size will be 150, line widths will be 5. Okay, and at that point, I think we're ready, so we'll do plt.show, and we'll see what we got. Okay, so that's the initial data. All right, so this is the, it's interesting, that shouldn't, shouldn't, maybe. Maybe that distance. I don't know if that's classified correctly. Anyway, these are the, the initial two centroid points, and it's claiming that all of these are closer to the red. We'll see. We might have made an error there, because I would think that's closer. I don't know. I'm just eyeballing it, but maybe. Maybe because the red's down. Anyway, but it's saying all these other points are actually closer to this centroid. So, But that was after, in theory, all of those, um, those iterations. But now, uh, let's go ahead and allow for this new centroid. Okay, so something worked correctly. <laughs> so anyway, uh, here's centroid zero, centroid one, or they might be reversed. As we found in the Titanic data set, it's really arbitrary which two oh, there are. Uh, but anyway, so a centroid and another centroid, and then these are, the, these are the clusters that belong to each centroid. So lo and behold, the code and the algorithm works. Amazing. We got lucky there. No typos. Impressive. So then what would happen if we uh, wanted to add some data? Right, that'll be exciting. So let's check and test the predictions. So we're gonna say unknowns. Those will be MP array, and then we'll have it be an array of some data. We'll do uh, one, two, three, whoops, four and five. Don't forget your commas. And then we'll say one three. We'll do an eight and a nine. Feel free to do any data you want to do. Uh, you don't have to copy me here. We're just gonna throw some in. 5, 4, and then a 6, 4. And uh, what we'll do here is for unknown in unknowns, the classification is just going to be clf.predict unknown. And then plt.scatter. Uh, and then we'll do unknown 0, unknown 1. Marker, we'll make these. Um, stars. Someone once complained that I, I use different quotes and at different times, so I'm trying to use the same quote. Anyway, I know it's really important to most of you. Equals colors classification. So it's just that index value, basically. Uh, size will be 150. Line widths will be 5. So these will plot unknown data by that centroid. And these, don't, these obviously do not move the centroid. Cool. So you've got the original data, and then these will be like all just new data points. And again, the prediction would just be how close is it to the latest known centroid. But how might things change if rather than unknowns being here, let's cut unknowns. And, and in fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to copy this, do this, and then I'm going to comment all of that out. And then let's just add unknowns to the original list. So it's not the most beautiful, but I'm not going to worry about it. OK, so that's that's what the data set now looks like. Let me close it. And then it turns out that, remember, this was actually a, a green data point, but it was actually quite close to this centroid. Um, but And what's happened now is due to the new group, we actually have this is now the, the new centroid. It was actually, actually quite close to the uh, one of these points, but it's not quite on that point. And you've got a centroid. This centroid's moved, because if you recall, these were the three original data points, so this centroid was actually more likely up here. And I don't remember, I think these are our three original here, so the centroid has moved a little bit there too. Anyways, kind of interesting to see, you know, if you added new data, what it kind of does to that. And then finally, what we can do is, um, where are we printing the distances for optimize? If np sum. So this is that percent change. So um, what we can do is print. So we'll just print, and then this will tell us how many iterations it went through, and then also it'll tell us like how big those are, so you can kind of see how it shrinks as time goes on. I'm just going to comment out that original plotting. Where is it? Here it is. That's interesting. So, huh. This must be when... Maybe one of them changed sides or something. 
I'm tempted to make like a live graph to show how it iterates and th goes through. So it's only like four movements. Uh, actually, yeah, four. So anyway, the first one moves almost 500%, the next one 13%, and then apparently the next one 52%. So <laughs> it's up there. But it must have, one of these points probably got reclassified. Like this point for some, some reason maybe got shifted and then so that made this shift hard, harder or something. I, I, I don't know, it's, fa it's fascinating. It's just absolutely fascinating, it's riveting. Let's close this. Let's say we go through, rather than see if we can change this max iteration. Uh, let's say first, let's do one. We can kind of cheat this way, right? So this would be like the first iteration through uh, where it just picks like two points. Um, this would be actually the second pass. Uh, so the first pass gave us about 500%. Uh, so that was the first pass. And then if you change this now to two, this will be our second pass. And by our second pass, you can actually see that we've we've completed everything. So that's actually pretty quick. <laughs> so zero, one, and then apparently two. Also, I'm just gonna add this in really quick. I was probably gonna have this on a different video, but I think I'm just gonna stuff it in here really quick. Uh, the, the source code here, I will put in the uh, text-based version of the tutorial, but basically this is just the meshing of our k-means classifier onto the Titanic data set uh, and, and seeing how we compare to scikit-learn just to make sure we get about the same result as scikit-learn. Uh, also, interestingly enough, this appears to, at least from my testing, calculate it at the, actually quicker than scikit-learn calculates it. So I'm not quite sure what's different about this code and scikit-learn's code. Uh, but for some reason this appears to go a little faster. But anyway, just to run through it really quick, um, we have, and maybe, you know, maybe the, the actual, the only difference is the import of like scikit-learn might be just a heavier import that takes a moment longer. That might be all there is to it. Anyway, because um, surely they've got more efficient code than I've got. Uh, so anyway. Uh, so this is just the code that we wrote before, nothing new here, um, some notes for myself, but nothing new here. Um, the download for the Titanic data set, uh, but mainly here, uh, this is all the code that we wrote for the other k-means one, we're handling non-numeric data here. Uh, so there's nothing, there's really nothing here that's new that you haven't seen, so I didn't really see much point of um, rewriting this <laughs> as a video. Anyways, uh, first, um, initially I thought I was doing this. There's really no reason to do that. So we'll fit to X actually, uh, X there, and then X. Because again, there's no, really no reason to ever um, to actually train test split with in this case of clustering. If you really wanted to know the prediction, but we would, we just want to know how well it clustered the entire data set, really. So, um, because it's not supervised, you can you can do this to get your initial information. So anyway, uh, we can run that really quick. Oh wait, I forgot about this. There we go. Pull it up here. Okay, and actually we that's a pretty high accuracy. That's around one. <laughs> it's supposed to be a little lower. Yeah, that's quite the variance there. Anyway, so, you know, about 65 to 75% somewhere in there. Um, and for some reason, it, it runs a lot quicker than scikit-learn. But I do wonder, I'll have to, maybe I'll, I'll add it to the text-based version or mention it in the next video. But maybe I should start the timer, like, here. So before the imports, and, or after the imports. Because I wonder if the imp importing from scikit-learn is bringing in a bunch of baggage that we don't actually need or something. I don't know. But anyway, it seems to actually calculate quicker than the uh, scikit-learn version, which is interesting. Anyway, that's all. I just wanted to show this really quick of us applying to it. Um, if you if you want to check it out for whatever reason, I'll put the text-based version in there. I just didn't want to waste time, you know, having a whole other video on this when there's really nothing new being, <laughs> being covered here. So you're welcome. Anyway. Okay, so that is your custom k-means classifier. So hopefully that was simple enough. I'm sure it was a nice break from the support vector machine. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, whatever up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, in the next tutorial, we're gonna be changing gears a little bit and talking about hierarchical clustering, where we actually let the machine figure out what's the best number of groups uh, to classify into. And to do that, we're gonna be using the mean shift algorithm. So that'll be exciting.
So anyways, questions, comments, leave them below. Otherwise, till next time.